Hello and welcome to this video from London Museum Development. I'm Alec Ward and I'm going to be taking you through the workflow for creating a 3D model through photogrammetry on Agisoft Metashape. So the first part of the process is adding photos. So once you've opened up Metashape and you've got all of your images, you want to go to workflow and then add photos. And then that'll open up uh, your folders and then you want to choose the folder which has all of the images in which you've already taken and then select all of the images that you want to use and then once you've selected them you can then just input them into the program uh, there's where you can you know choose different folders I'm using a Mac so it might look slightly different to yours uh, but yeah that's how you add in the photos ready for the next stage so once you've added in all of the photos, you then want to go through the process of aligning them. And this basically allows the program to work out where in space each photo should be layered to help create a 3D model. Now this process actually takes a little bit of time. And for this one, I've done most things on either medium or low to make it quicker just for the tutorial. Um, depending on how good your uh, computer is, depends on how high you want to be processing them. Um, and then once it's done, you're left with this uh, point cloud. So the next step of the workflow is to build the dense cloud. Now, once you've aligned the uh, photographs, you've kind of got a point cloud which um, basically identifies different points uh, using the images that will help build a 3D model. The dense cloud is then the process of um, working out how these points will align to eventually complete a 3D model. The idea of photogrammetry is that the program uses all of the different images, works out where they are in space, and then uses that information to, to build the 3D model. So what I was just doing there is just showing you some of the um, different ways that you can move the model around using that ball axis. But once you're happy with how the model looks, you then want to, again, start processing that dense cloud. I've done it, again, on uh, medium slash low, and I'm also speeding this up in post. Uh, the actual process takes much longer. So when you're doing this at home, you really want to base how high you process the model on the power of the device that you're using. So the next stage of the workflow is to build the mesh, which is basically the bones of uh, your 3D model. But before I go on to that stage of the workflow, I just wanted to quickly show you some of the ways that you can move the model around and resize the area that the program focuses on when it's creating your 3D model. Once you're happy with that, you then again want to go to workflow and this time choose build mesh. And then that will start the process of building the mesh of your 3D model. And again, choose the setting that matches your computer's processing power. So if the mesh was the bones of your 3D model, the texture is the skin. So the next process is going to be building the texture. But before that, I'm just going to quickly show you how you can remove leftover artifacts on your model. So whenever the uh, program looks over photographic data, it will always end up bringing in external artifacts basically extra pieces of information that don't quite make up the model but that the computer program wasn't 100 percent sure whether or not it was part of the model so it's now up to you to delete those extra pieces and basically tidy up the model before you finish it off now you can do this in other programs like blender for instance but if the final model is pretty good as this one was then you can just tidy it up in the program itself and it will look pretty much be good to go to upload to you know sketchfab or wherever you were going to put it so that was just taking you through the few different options for how you can tidy up your model and, and delete the uh, artifacts and once you're happy with it you can then go to the next stage uh, which is pretty much the final stage which is building the texture Now sometimes, particularly if you're uh, making a model which doesn't have a, a base that you've scanned, you'll end up with holes. So there is a process within Metashape that allows you to close those holes for when you then upload them to other programs um, like Sketchfab for viewing it, but a program like Blender if you wanted to do any editing. Um, but before I show you through that, I was just quickly showing you uh, how you can look at the different um, types of your model. So from the uh, sort of like finished product, which is this, uh, to the def different textures. So you can see where all of the different faces are of the model, for instance, which is like the equivalent of a pixel. Uh, for a 3D model. Once you're happy with everything and um, you're ready to go, you can close the holes uh, by going up to the top and then uh, selecting uh, mesh 
and then close holes. And again, you've got like a level of how you close it because you might find that your model has some holes in it that you don't necessarily want closed. So you can toggle it and, and see where those holes will be. For this model, there was just one hole and it was at the bottom uh, where we didn't capture the base when it was uh, photographed. And then yeah, you've pretty much got your finished model. So I hope that you found this uh, tutorial useful on using Metashape. Obviously there are alternatives out there. The main reason that we use Metashape through the Digital Futures training program is that it works on uh, Mac and it also works on PC and you can also download a free trial to uh, test it out to see uh, how you find the program if you like it. There are lots out there as well like Reality Capture. You just need to think about the device that you're using and uh, the program that suits both your budget and your skill level. I thought I'd just quickly end this video with some top tips. The first thing that you really wanna be thinking about when you're creating 3D models is storage, how you plan on storing all that data because uh, you can very quickly, with all of the photographs and the, the model data itself, uh, it can quickly rack up. So think about external storage, but also potentially storing it on the cloud as well. Um, you wanna think about where you're gonna be sharing your models. So. One of the easiest ways is probably through the platform Sketchfab, uh, where you can upload the model, you can do some extra things to it, like add uh, little captions, you can light it in different ways, so it does give you a bit of uh, creative freedom there. And then you can also embed the models on your website, and you could potentially look at having your own website embedder for 3D models. And there are other options out there as well, sort of plugins for WordPress uh, that you can potentially use to, to share your models. You might also wanna be thinking about how you could share them in gallery potentially on tablet devices so that people can look at them whilst they visit. Obviously you also wanna be thinking about um, hygiene, particularly at the moment with COVID-19. How are you gonna keep those uh, tablet devices clean? Potentially you could look at having them play on videos um, so that people can watch them without having to touch them. You know, there are lots of options that you can potentially go for. Before you really start any 3D scanning, you want to be, th be thinking carefully about what you want to 3D scan because obviously museums have a lot of objects and there are lots of things that you could potentially make 3D models of. But it is a time intensive process from capturing the photographs to uh, building the models. So you really want to be thinking carefully about what you're going to scan. Think about perhaps a few hero objects, some of your more popular objects, or perhaps think about some of your more fragile or delicate objects that you can't have on public display, which would make really good 3D models. And then just last bit of advice um, would be to avoid glass, reflective surfaces, um, metal, because the way that photogrammetry works, um, these materials really don't respond very well. There are ways that you can get around it, but in an ideal world, you'll look for more um, sort of matte, less textured objects to 3D scans. That's why things like statues uh, are really good. And I actually got this um, cherub from a website called 3dflow.net, and they've got some really good tutorials on there as well. Um, and uh, you can download this cherub as a file to, to use for practice. I don't have access to all of my equipment at the moment and my models uh, that I have photographs of already. Um, so I was unable to use something that I made myself, but this is a really good model, particularly when it comes to uh, going through the process so you understand the program. Um, the other thing that uh, 3D Flow have is a really handy guide on um, photographing objects for photogrammetry. And I've shared the links to both of those in the video description below. So thank you very much for watching. Best of luck with your 3D models.